arm and they had to like wrap it in like gauze and ice. I remember some of my skin's coming off. I was like, two H two efforts. It's Thursday. You're back with your favorite two mother efforts and chef Mary Lou Davis. Mm -hmm. Woo Mary Lou. Whiskey <laughs> cake. If you're in San Antonio, go to whiskey cake. If you're not in San Antonio, then you should be watching Hell's Kitchen right now with Mary Lou Davis. Really? And we're going to get into the show. We're going to tell, she's going to tell us secrets, Gordon Ramsay's secrets. <laughs> you know, whatever she's allowed to say, you know. <laughs> we'll see what we can get out of her. But with that said, let's go. Let's sit back, buckle up. I think I said that wrong. I had a little too much. Okay. And let's go too hard, too fast. Bye. No, 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 not bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Hi, Hello. Yeah. <laughs> All right, there it is. It's uh, I messed it up, and then it's good All enough. Right, it's better. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome to Too Hard, Too Fast. Too Hard, Too Fast. Too Hard, Too Fast. Too Hard, Too Fast. Welcome to Too Hard, Too Fast. Welcome back, everybody, to Too Hard, Too Fast, where the drinks are cold. And Worm likes to wear his glasses. Ooh, ooh. And no shirt, usually. Because he's high. Because <laughs> he's hot. Ooh. The podcast of the century. It's the local. <laughs> hey, 2 h 2 First, this episode with Mary Lou Davis is sponsored by Standard Proof Whiskey. They also sent us their Texas Pecan Rye Whiskey for us to try on the podcast, for the podcast, <clears throat> for them, and give it a rating. I say us, but Worm, I'm sorry. I, I'll what ship you a shot glass. U UPS, bro. UPS. Next yeah. day, overnight, overnighter. They also gave us this gift right here. This bottle can opener. There's only one. Again, Worm, I'm sorry. Just cut it in half. Give me the circle part. But they gave us two stickers, so I can send you a sticker. All right, sounds good. With a shot and half of the bottle opener. Sounds good. <laughs> hey, we're gonna try this with Mary Lou Davis on the podcast. But I do want to let you know, downtown Nashville, they have a location. It's uh, it's where they infuse and bottle their 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 stuff on site. You can try all their liquors. Standard Proof Whiskey, thank you very much for sponsoring this episode of Too Hard, Too Fast Podcast. Thank you. If you can, rye, try it. So so wait, so after Tower of America, is that is that is that the opportunity that came or yes. what was after Tower of the Americas that led you to that point? Then it was whiskey kick. So it's like after Tower of the Americas, I, I remember like messaging back and forth with like my old GM because I saw it on LinkedIn. And I had this thing where I'm like, signs come in threes. So mm -hmm. one of the managers, the only other girl manager at the tower, she worked in the front. I worked in the back. She's like, I really like whiskey cake. And I was like, I've never heard of it before. And she's like, well, I'm really trying to work there. I hope they like make one or they have an opening soon. And then after that, um, one of my friends was like, yeah, I went to Whiskey Cake yesterday and it was really cool. You should think about working there, Mary. And I was like, that was the second time I've heard that. And then I'm on my LinkedIn page because I was looking for another job because, you know, I hated my job so much. And it was like, Mary, John Wilson now has a job at Whiskey Cake. And I said, this is a Dang. sign. This is a sign. So then I sent him a message like, hey, if you need a sous chef, let me know. And he goes, you let me know if you know of any. And I was like, that was cold. <laughs> and after that, like, he's like, I'm just messing with you. Why don't you come on in? And like. He, he hired me on the That's spot. That's funny. So, and how long ago was that? Almost four years. Yeah. So you're able to flip off Tower of America? Pretty much. Yeah. Did they hate oh, it? You should do it like when you're driving downtown. Just yeah. <laughs> Motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Place. So what's, what's your overall goal as a, like, how high do you want to get? Yeah. Not yeah like, like, what kind of weed do you high, use to get like, real high? high. <laughs> I, I eventually want to own my own spot. Like I would very much like to have my own spot, but right now I'm not in the position to get one. Cause I got a lot of people that are like, why don't you start your own? And I was like, where's that start your own money at? I need to <laughs> meet somebody where they're like, I want to invest in you, whatever you want. That's, that's, hey, what I'm, I'm always looking for investments. Really? Yeah, oh. no, for real. I'm like, you know, you go by worms. So I didn't know. Yeah. yeah no. <laughs> so George, George, you down? Let's go in. Worm's only the character. He he's the one with the money. I'm just here for the for the rules for the rules. Yeah, I see. I even I even uh, contributed to a Kickstarter campaign uh, last last episode to my uh, cousin who's starting up a brewery. So 
Ooh. Start up a kickstart. That's where you, that's that's your first step. Start up okay. a kickstart. Let me write that down. <laughs> She's like, fuck you. I'm not gonna... <laughs> that's not what I'm thinking at all. That's not what I'm thinking. I I think if like if I ever want to like start something, I do need some type of business plan. I'm over here with nothing written down. I'm like, tell me what you want to do right now. And I'm like, I like to dress up in costumes. I'm like, what, what do I say? <laughs> Let me work. Let me work on that. Like, what's your mission? Hey, you're on the right track somewhere. You have a YouTube channel that you know it, it's the production on it is really good. So, uh, Geeks and Grubs, your YouTube I channel. Do a good job. Yeah, there you go. It's really nice. Uh, it's a lot better than the Zoom stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, obviously, you have the. Hey, what about a, like a, a food truck? Sorry, just hit me. Food truck. I really want to start doing pop ups at like other restaurants, and it's like they're like, "Hey, Chef Mary Lou's coming in, and she's gonna do some wacky, kooky, fun, extravagant, unextravagant home style." I'm throwing a bunch of, of adjectives in there, and, <laughs> and yeah, I was like, "Who knows what I'm gonna do?" But that's that's what I'm working towards right now. It's just I like the pop ups because then it gets my name out there, but it also moves me around but it doesn't give me a solid commitment you know it's like i need to be here this day to do these things and then later on it's like i i edit her i when she did this pop-up oh i was over here when she did this pop-up and then i make something later on it's like i know that name i know who that person is yeah i've listened to like some people doing that kind of stuff like i feel like that's like a good thing or trend mm -hmm. to jump it's into it's nice. not like it's not a huge trend where it's like it's like saturated but it's like it's a and thing. It's fun, especially when you're like like downtown at plenty of spots where they just have like a bar and it's like, hey, let me bring some of my kitchen equipment up in here. I'll bring my portable burner. Especially I've got especially now with the whole COVID thing and you you can only open if there's food. Yeah, no. Like, hey, I'll be here for you Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to open these things. You share your <laughs> profits with me. And they're like, bet. So I like nice. that. Mary Lou, that's that would be that would be awesome. Right. I, would, I, mean, I mean, I probably could never afford whiskey cake. So I you would definitely go to a pop. Whiskey cake is not expensive. I am just kidding, Mary Lou. <laughs> I don't make my way up that direction. I'm just kidding. I'm also just kidding with that. That's <laughs> expensive. Now, if you want to go, like, I throw a pairing dinner at whiskey cake once a month. And it's like, see, you would like this. You get six drinks, all whiskey based. And then you get six um, uh, entrees. And I make the entrees and the bar manager makes the drinks and they're all like, mm. and it's only like $75. Dang, hey, okay. Next time I go into town, George, we're going to go. Mary Lou, you'll be there. We'll let you know. Oh, yeah, we'll there. I'm there in all of them. All right. All right so, done deal. Let's do it. Our next I'm one is six, you, you had me at six whiskey drinks. <laughs> Man, so we have like this new um, bar manager. And so she didn't realize that you're supposed to give out half portions during the dinner. So she gave out six full drinks by dessert. First of all, like dessert didn't turn out the way I wanted at all. So I was really upset by it. But nobody knows that because everybody was so fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what we want. We want the full the full service. They're all like, man, this is dessert. I was going to eat it. And I was like, no, you're fine. Have a good day. <laughs> like I have my cousin over there talking to um the bar rep. We have like a whiskey rep over there and he's talking to me. So the whiskey rep comes up to me. He's like, I'm about to be part of your family now. And I'm like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to my cousin. I said, this is your fault because you know when you drink, you get too friendly. And he's like, I'm just making friends, man. <laughs> I'm so tired of you. Dude, I am down with that. And also, is it BYOB? It is not BYOB, <laughs> but six drinks. Six drinks. I'm down. Warm. That would be cool. And hey, come good. Drinks, Next time I go. Full ass cocktails. Nice. And can we record it and uh, make a podcast out of it? I don't see why not, but if oh. anything changes, I'll let you know. I was like, come on. <laughs> All right. I'll be trying to Instagram live. I'm like, what's up, everybody? Yeah, that's what's you up. My kitchen. <laughs> what's up? I'm like, what the fuck is that? He, hold, hold the fucking phone. <laughs> I said a lot of the F-bombs. You have to bleep all those out. Yeah, I think this whole podcast is just going to be like, just deadline okay. the whole way. I work that's in a kitchen. <laughs> I you know what? Like, if you're cool with it, I'll make it the explicit uh, podcast. There you I, go. I'll, yeah. I'll leave it all in. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that's that one more. That one gets cut out. That's the only one that gets cut out. Warm. All right. Fuck it. 
<laughs> um, all right, let's get into Hell's Kitchen. It's about damn time, dude. Shit. <laughs> Fucking George over here with social justice shit. All right. I know. I, hey. I'm just playing. No, it's good. I'm just playing. It's important. It's important. You know, the truth needs to be out there, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how is it in hell? All right. I'm, I'm more of a heaven guy, but how is it in hell? It's a little hot. <laughs> so Hell's Kitchen, it was, you know, let's blow the fourth wall down a little bit. It was filmed in 2018, correct? 19. Can you say that? It was filmed huh? in 2019. 19. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey, as we start going into hell, let me bring my rosary very quick. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's go. Let's go. Whew. Do it. Okay. So 2019. What? When in 2019? Um, April because I we finished on Cinco de Drinko because I remember I called my friend. I was like, I really wish I could be in Austin with you getting drunk right now. <laughs> Dang. Okay. So that. I thought it was 2018, so that's why I was like, God, man, that was, like, way too long ago. Um, and so when I really was l- looking at it, I'm thinking in my head, like, it was 2020, and then I'm seeing all these people. I was like, there's no way it was filmed in 2020. And that's why I started digging into it because, you know, mm-hmm. everything happened, you know, all that craziness, uh, pandemic stuff. Um, how did you get on to Hell's Kitchen in the first place? That's like its own like type of story. So my I'd recently broken up with my boyfriend, maybe about like a good like eight months. And so I started being more active on Instagram because you know, like I, I got him right now. So I started being more active and my friend was talking to me and she's like, but Mary, everybody does you- this, Mary. <laughs> That's how it worked. And he was my friend was like, Mary, you gotta hit everybody with them hashtags. And I was like, I don't wanna be that person. She's like, no, nah, hit them with the hashtags. So then I posted a picture of myself on Instagram cooking. Like just, I have like my pink hair and I'm, I'm like salt bane on something. It was a super cute picture. And I hit all these hashtags like she told me to. And then I got a message from somebody that was like, would you like to be on Hell's Kitchen? And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I thought it was a joke because I got asked to be on a show beforehand and that didn't work out for me. So then I just told the lady, I was like, yeah, sure. Like, uh, I'd like to be on Hell's Kitchen, even though I, I'd never really seen the show. I knew about it. Like, who doesn't know about Hell's Kitchen? But and you I, got message. You got message on Instagram like that. Yes. Like, would you? Okay, so. I, I'm a, a public relations person, or I'm a broadcasting person. It was something to that effect. I was like, "Hey, would you like to be on the show?" So I'm, I'm like, "Yeah, sure, I'd like to be on the show." And she's like, "All right, sketchy, let's- sketchy AF," because already like. Yeah, I went over and I, I went on Google. I googled who she was so I could make sure she was real. <laughs> okay. 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 You know, it wasn't one of those like Instagram messages where there's no picture. Like it was a picture, said her name and her like email address. And I was like, oh, this person's real. So then I was like, that's cool. Then after that, they're like, let's set up a Skype interview. And so we just, we did a Skype interview and she's like, Mary, you're the first person that I've talked to. We're like, we're just looking out, but she's like, I, this is great. I just feel so good about you. And I was like, thank you. You know, like they probably say that about everybody. Like, oh, this is going to be great. She just like was hyping me up the entire time. And I was like, Man, Mary, you are killing them with these jokes. Like, you didn't even know they was jokes and they was hidden. So <laughs> I, I had all that. And then afterwards, it, the whole process took like four or five months. Then I didn't hear from her for a while. And then she's like, can you send me a couple pictures and a couple videos of you cooking in the kitchen? And I was like, sure. So I sent those. And then it's like crickets. You don't hear anything. It's like, hey, Mary, um, can you please fly down to California? Because everybody loves you and they want to talk to you. But at that time, since it had been like four months, I was in Florida opening another restaurant. And I was like, I can't go. I need to open up this restaurant. Like the day they want me to go is, of course, the day the restaurant opens. And I'm like, I spent all this time there. I I can't go. And she's like, I'm really sorry to hear that you can't go. And she goes, all right, well, we'll get back to you. So then she has her boss call me and is like, Mary, you need to come over here. And I was like, oh, Okay, so then I had to tell, like, you know, like, the, the CEO's there, like, the director of operations there. Everybody's there because you're opening the restaurant. I was like, hey, guys, um, I got asked to be on this TV show. And I, because I told nobody, because I told you the previous TV show, I told everybody it didn't work out. Wow. So this one I told no one. I was like, hey, so I got asked to be on this show. I almost ended up losing my job because of it. And there, I, I remember we're, we're opening up this restaurant. And it's in a mall. And everybody was taking me on a walk. It's like, hey, Mary, let's go for a walk. And I was like, 
<laughs> so we go and they would, I had one walk. I got Starbucks out of each walk. So I was pretty happy. So we have one walk and one of them telling me, one guy's telling me a story about how he wanted to be on the football team or go to go be a pro football player and how that didn't work out. The next guy's telling me a story about how everybody is replaceable. And the third one is telling me a story about how his chef went on top chef and made a fool out of himself the entire time. And so I was like, well, none of this is really helping me. But then I ended up talking to another one of the chefs who's there with me. And he was like, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity, Mary. Like, you got to do this shit. You got to get this shit done. When are they, who else did I ask him? And I was like, you're right, you're right. So then I called one of my old friends and I'm like, hey, if I didn't work at Whiskey, would there be a chance for me to work with you? And he goes, yeah, tell me why I get a message the next day from my GM saying, uh, a screenshot of the message that I sent the other dude. And I was like, this hoe is fucking dead to me. <laughs> I, got, I didn't say I was going to quit. I just said, do I have another opportunity? But because of that, everybody was like, Mary's really serious. She might quit. So then they talked to me and they're like, look, what you do on your days off is up to you. And I was like, okay. So then I, I flew to California. It was supposed to be four days. They got it done in two. Cause I was like, I got to go back. And then after that, they, um, Another like month went by and they're like, Mary, can you be ready to fly out to Las Vegas in um, two weeks? And I was like, oh, it's like that. And that's, that's how I got on the show. That's badass. <laughs> really? That is crazy. Because to me, I would still be like, nah, that, that message is fake. I would not going to answer that one. Ignore it. Uh, I like screenshot <laughs> and tell my friends. I was like, look, is this real? It's fucking real. Well, so so how, what, what's your experience been like? It was amazing. It was such an eye-opening experience. I feel like such a stronger and more confident person because of it. Like, if you watch the beginning of the show up to wherever we're at now, I think we're on episode seven, it's like, at the beginning, I'm really quiet. Like, you you see me and you don't think that I'm going to be a real quiet person. I'm quiet. I'm scared. I'm shy. Because my, my GM at the time was like, they're going to put you on the show and they're going to put you up against people that they know you're going to lose against because you're entertaining. So I had, like, no confidence up there. I was like, I couldn't remember how to cook anything. I just didn't feel good about anything. I'm looking at everybody else and what they're cooking. Cause I'm like, you need to up your game up there. You need to be better. Otherwise you're just going to fail and everyone's going to laugh at you. But being on the show, like it made me realize like I'm, I'm great just the way that I am. Like everything that I do, it's mine. Like there's not another Mary Lou. I'm the only one. So I need to do things the way that I want to do them. And it, it was great. I loved it. I, I would do it again. Truly a once in a lifetime opportunity. Yes. Like, hey, if anyone asks you to go, like, go, go. <laughs> so what happened, with, uh, what happened with the opening in Florida? Oh, no, we all, I came back. Um, we finished opening and then I just went back to San Antonio and I was only there for two weeks before I had to go back. Nice. Or before I had to leave. And I was like, hey, I know I just came back, but I got to go for three weeks. So you're going to be OK. And they were like, Ugh. so in order for me to go, like I'm a salaried um, uh, chef. But I had to, like, not get paid for the entire time that I was gone. I was like, um, just don't pay me. And but that's like, cool. No, the whole me. recording lasted three weeks? Yes, lasted three weeks. Okay. We something every single day. Damn. Except and, for and you can see it on the show, like, um, it's so weird because I watch, I'm a fan of, I don't know if it's bad to mention other shows, but. I'm a fan of the MTV Challenge, like the Road Rules, Real World stuff. Mm -hmm. And I also like watching cooking shows. So, like, at the same time, this is like a mixture of both. Yeah, like I said, I've never, and I've never watched, yeah, I've never watched this show before. And I'm watching it now. And it's like, oh, it's kind of like mixing both worlds. And I think the last two episodes, they finally show a little more of the home or like, you your living situation, you guys interacting outside of like the challenges of the kitchen, where it's like more like oh I'm living and having to interact with these people, and they have their own way of being. Oh, how we are they might be scheming kind of thing because also at the same time like even though you're teams, you're having to yeah. you know compete against one another. Eventually, only one there's only one winner. Um, it can only be one. Yeah. So how is that? How is that like living situation? The living situation, like we're all in the dorms together, but I think because I'd had that time being an RA, like I'm used to being around a bunch of people all the time. 
It, it didn't really bother me. Like even when we're sleeping next to each other, I had my own bed, so I was fine. I'm like, don't touch me. That's that's all it was. So the boys are on one side, the girls are on one side. We shared a common room, but like my my girls, like we got along just fine. Like we we're great. It was it was the blue team that I was like, mm, they, mm-hmm. they shit together. It's because the blue teams are the guys that full of testosterone. Like the trying to scheme, yeah, trying to scheme against each other. And then the one girl that has to go into the blue team. Yeah, Amber has right. to go on over there. I was like, sorry. Yeah. yeah so um, somebody has to go on my breath. I was like, don't you send me over there. Do not send me. <laughs> He's like, Amber. I was like, woo, there it is. <laughs> And so how you were saying that your progression where it was like you were timid at first and and then all of a sudden you you were in your own element again. And mm-hmm. you, I think I can kind of see it at the beginning now that I'm thinking of it. Like you were you were still like you had jokes from the very beginning. And I was I was noticing, okay, again, I'm watching this show because you're gonna be on the podcast. And so I'm trying to like really study you. But then I start noticing Mary Lou gets a lot of camera time. Like she really does get a lot of because she has funny stuff to say. Or she has like weird things that she's doing on the show. Uh, and weird in a good way. Uh, so she gets a lot of camera time. And then I started noticing actually today the episode where one of the girls gets sent home. And I for some reason I was just like, I don't think Mary Lou has ever gotten yelled. Oh, because I wanted to ask you if Gordon Ramsay really is that much of a, like a, a, a hothead or not hothead, but uh, like a dick. I don't know. Is that a, that's not? A, I don't know. Like that the way he comes off. You know his his brand is like yeah. He's tell you in your face. Yeah, can I just yell at you? Yeah, he's a feisty but, man. He's very passionate about what he does, but it's like. They only show you the bad parts. They don't show you the beginning of service where we're prepping. And he's like, Mary Lou, make sure that you do this this way. Or Nikki, you need to make sure that you score like this. Like he goes through the kitchens and he helps everybody, but you don't see that. So then it's like, he spent this time helping you. And then you made a mistake. And he's like, don't do it again. And you're like, okay. And then you did it again. And then he gets pissed the hell off. And it's like, you should have known better. Like you have one chance. Like don't, don't mess it up. So he definitely, I've been told that he's not as fiery as he used to be on the other seasons. But for me, I don't, I don't think he ever yelled at me. Like he was stern. That's what I was going to say. Like I've never seen him yell at you technically. Well, what a shame. Not yelled at me. I haven't done anything I feel yell worthy. It's like I made a mistake and I fix it. But it's also like, are you going to own up to your mistake? Are you going to say that you're the one that made a mistake? Like when I fuck up, I, f- I fucked up. It was me. I'm going to fix it. I apologize. I won't let it happen again. One of my chefs had taught me that. She's like, no, don't argue. Don't ever say anything back. Just say, I apologize, and I won't let it happen again. And so that, that's what I do every time I make a mistake. Yes, that was my fault, and I will not let it happen again. And you don't have anything to say to that. You're just like, well, don't. <laughs> <laughs> one thing that made me laugh in the last episode was, uh, I think it was the last one, the one before, uh, you were helping Cyan with something. A cook and- in the meat. Yeah, yeah. And then you're like, don't hug me in front of chef. (laughs) You want to make me seem weak. And I was like, don't look weak, don't look weak. Because I was so proud of her because she finally got it. She's like, hey, don't hug me, don't touch me. And after it was over, I was like, Cyan! (laughs) But, um, yeah, I was was just, like, going back to the whole, like, Gordon Ramsay, like, I think it must be the only reason they show like the bad stuff from him is because I think that's the brand that he's built and mm-hmm. that's what sells the show. And so I, I'm glad you answered it. Like I wanted to know like how he really is in person. So obviously he's helpful enough to, like, he's obviously trying to build somebody that's going to take over, uh, I guess in the show, uh, uh, a kitchen in Tahoe, mm-hmm. in Lake Tahoe. Uh, so obviously he's going to want somebody that, knows what they're doing and the only way you can do that is interact with them. So you obviously you guys had get a lot of interaction with him. Yes. So we we got a decent amount of interaction time with them. Like the the fewer our numbers get, the more time that you actually get with him. But he does like come into the kitchen when we're prepping and talk with us and see what's going on. But I know that 
I know he's watching us. Like there's those cameras everywhere. So I know he's watching what we're doing. Maybe not so much in the dorms, but like, let me see what you're going to do on the line when I'm not there. And it's like, are you working? Or are you playing around? And I'm, I'm you know, I'm be honest with you. I'm kind of a mixture of both. Where it's like, I get my job done, but I like to joke with everybody. So like, there's like one episode is one of the previous ones where Jordan is really upset. And I was like, you want me to shake some, you want me to some, you want me to twerk a little something next to you? Cause I thought she laughed, but she was a little upset. So she didn't laugh, but I was like, that was a good one. I was like, you know how many people would like that, Jordan? You know how many people would like that? <laughs> it's like, I get my job done, but I do with a smile on my face. Like I'm happy in the kitchen. It worked like that one. Yeah, dude. Um, funny, dude. Um, so I, I, you must be right because there was one, and it, it was this last episode. Um, Cairo, Kiro, I don't know her name. I forget her name. Corey? Corey. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Jinga. Uh, Corey, um, she says something, you know, she's calling out two minutes about something. And I don't know what it is. Like, I, I'm not, half the time when he yells out the orders, I don't even hear him so i would have i would be lost already I'm like you wanted what i made a sandwich <laughs> <laughs> you're right oh, but my sandwich you, you just want to taste it because it's a, it's a fire ass sandwich <laughs> so chef i finally remembered that one sandwich that i that uh, <laughs> made a long time ago <laughs> so, uh, so there's no i am at least in my head just from the perspective of the tv there's no way Gordon Ramsay hears her say the two minute part. And so yeah. I'm thinking it has to be like he he's reviewing tapes. Obviously he wants to make it fair for everybody if that's you know the case. So so yeah, he must be like watching other stuff and studying. I don't think that he watches like the tapes. Cause I know that there's this room that is in between both kitchens and you can see what's going on in both kitchens. So I think he's like in there sometimes watching us just to make sure that we're doing what we're supposed to do. But also that's why he has his two sous chefs and they will report back to him on what happened. But during service, you know, he's watching both kitchens and it's already like complicated. And so I'm pretty sure that he's not paying attention to what's going on with us. Cause he's expecting the sous to pay attention, but he's also trying to see, can you guys handle it by yourself? Because you're trying to get this job. Can you do this by yourself? Can somebody mess something up and you lead everybody the right way? It's like, it's up to y'all. Let me see if y'all pass. And then I think he goes back. I don't know. I don't think he watches anything. I think he's just like, I lived it. Why do I need to watch it? Dude, that's how I am. I, sometimes I don't watch uh, all of our episodes. I just, because <laughs> I, I know what's going to happen. <laughs> I created and the content. In three, two, one. called it <laughs> yeah george does all the work i just show up i show up and get drunk that that's my job. It's so like, hey cheers to that <laughs> if you cheers. watch like my geeks and grubs like we start out and i have my whole bottle of wine and i'm like y'all y'all edited this right because usually towards the end i get a little like sloppy in my words and i'm like damn it, mary <laughs> you drink the whole bottle <laughs> even better oh man you know you don't know how many times i've texted one oh. the next day going Worm, did we close out the podcast? Did we do the? Did we do the too hard too fast story? Did we do that? Yeah, sometimes Jordy's a mess. He can't handle his liquor. Mary Lou, how far are you in your bottle? Let me let, let's. As far as I'd like to be, I'm only like about right here. Ah, dude. Oh, we're out. Disappointed now. us. It's all right. I'm working on. I think it. I think I've I've made more damage on this than you've done on your. Uh, I don't believe Ooh, that. Right here, dude, the whole bottle, dude. I'm like, like you were already like a quarter of the way done. I didn't started. open it to this podcast. That was the rule for this uh for this thing. I couldn't open it until the podcast. And then worm, you already had happy your shit gone. <laughs> I drank before. I drank before. Worm, worm, worm is lying. He's like, he's no to do. Before. before, I like to. Know, but loose. we are. Hey, we're both. We're still. Everybody's still double fisting. That one. Oh, is that your beer? No, this is like I had. I didn't want to take a potty break, so I did this. <laughs> yeah. <Is it> warm? <laughs> You're really drink it. We want to say you drink it. You no, it is, it, is, it is beer. It is beer. 
<laughs> Look at you put it in a cup and shit. You so classy. A little bit, a little mason jar, a little mason. Class. Jar. I was gonna call him a bitch. <laughs> you call him classy. <laughs> what, I, what I can, I like to uplift everybody. You look classy. <laughs> well, that's yeah, too hard, too fast. We don't do that kind of stuff here. How come you haven't uplifted me? That's yeah, all right. It's okay. yeah, later. Yeah. Worm, she loves you, Worm. She's been complimenting you the whole time. All she time. does is talk shit to me, dude. All she does is talk <laughs> shit. She didn't like my hot Cheeto fucking idea, dude. It's all good. I, I said something good about the hot Cheeto. I said nice texture, nice heat. I didn't say anything about the hot Cheetos and avocados that I can't eat because I'm allergic to avocados. But I was oh, like, you I, see, I'm George, you fucking asshole, dude. <laughs> well, why did you say that when I suggested it? Oh, I was just going to tell my sous chef to make it tomorrow and be like, you eat this so I can take a picture so I can let George know that I'm on his side. But now you go with it. <laughs> oh, my bad. My bad. I'm sorry. You see, dude, nothing but negativity towards me. Dang. Life. Living in San Antonio and allergic to avocado. Ah, oh, dude, that's Yeah, tough, it makes man. life really hard. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> shit. So with chachos, you can't try that avocado sauce, dude. Dang. No. That's, that's, so, that's my favorite. I'll be like, this shit slaps. And they're like, Mary. I'm like, <laughs> It's not tomatillos, and they're like, no. And I was like, oh no, I'm gonna go home. I was like, before all this hits, <laughs> what happens? Like, do you just like inflate or what? They're like, like really bad gastrointestinal problems, but not oh. like ha ha ha. Mary's over here farting, like my stomach gets real distended, and there's like this pressure, oh. and it fucking hurts, and then I feel like I'm gonna vomit everywhere, and I just have to like lay down. I'm like, oh, so I'm lactose. That's what happens if I drink if I drink milk. <laughs> I'm like, I can't. Do this. I don't like this. I get so uncomfortable. <laughs> so that that brings a question from the show as well. Like that girl Amber is allergic to shellfish. Yes. How does a chef deal with cooking food that they may be allergic to? You you wear gloves if it's like a contact. For me, it's not really contact. For some reason, like when I'm dealing with avocados. If I deal with citrus and avocados, it like makes my hand stings. I don't know why. So, you know, like there's literally everything that involves avocados has citrus in it. But for me, both of those mess with me. For her, she could touch the shellfish. She just can't ingest it. But if she does, it's not a huge reaction. Because I remember on the show in the last episode, she was like, I'm just going to eat it. And I was like, well, then you're not going to die because you wouldn't have eaten that if you were going to die. It just makes you uncomfortable, which is the same thing with me and avocados. Like, I'm not going to die, but I'm not going to be feeling good for a little bit. So for a lot of chefs, like you need to have, you need to understand your flavor profiles because this works with this and this goes with this and this gives you the good texture, but you need to have somebody with you that can also taste your food. Cause on, I think on the next episode with avocados and I have to have my girls, I'm like, can you taste this? Can you taste this? Can you taste this? And they're like, yeah. Uh, I was gonna volunteer if you need a taster. I'm, I'm, I'm a fat you. ass. I'm more than qualified <laughs> to be a taster. Like Resume. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you get somebody that you trust to taste your food. I'm like, what does it need? So I'll, I'll make like guacamole a bunch of times at work. And I'm like, what do you think? And there, there was like, I think I made it maybe six months ago for everybody in the restaurant. And I had like six people come back, tell me, this you had too much garlic. No, I thought the garlic was fine. I think she needed more acid. I thought the acid was fine. I think she had too much cumin. I thought that was fine. It just needed more salt. And I was like, so which one? <laughs> all y'all are saying something different. They're like, mm. and I was like, forget y'all. Forget all y'all. I'll do what I want. <laughs> there you go. You can't work with avocado. And then apparently you don't like to do rice or you can't do rice. No, I'm good at rice now, but also rice cooker. Like they make those. So we could all use that. But like that first episode, I was bad at rice, but I make rice two more times. And I, I like it came out just fine. And you know, when I make <laughs> that, I tried to scoop out the crunchy bits, you know, when you. When you <laughs> <laughs> yes. We like, actually made. So we're like the same night that I started watching the, that, the, the, the first episode. We made chicken and rice, like kind of mixed into it, like traditional Mexican. Arroz con pollo. Yes, arroz con pollo. Look, hey, say cuss word in Spanish. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to cut that one out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hey, what'd you um, call me? I said what I said. <laughs> um. So, anyways, so the rice there was like it was like taste test, and I tasted it, and I was like, I think the white ones we need to take out. <laughs> <laughs> the ones that are not red, they have to go. 
He's like, yes, and I then know. it's just funny that I, I watched the show. And you're like, I just don't want to do anything with rice. I can't cook rice. Don't throw rice at me. And then you get rice. It was really upsetting. It's like I had already like they they shot that, and then after they shot that, then they put me in the confessional. So they didn't know beforehand. But that's the one thing. Like even in culinary school, like I I could not make rice. I was made ass rice, white rice black rice brown rice or wild rice i'd fuck it up every time and i was like why is it crunchy and squishy like i don't <laughs> understand and they're like mary you just not you don't have the ratio right and i was like you said put this much in it they're like you didn't mix it you didn't do this and i was like fuck that rice and then I'm <laughs> like i'm there and everybody's rolling like the wheel because i think on the episode it shows me going like first or second but i actually was like last to pull the wheel so everybody had already gotten things. But each time Chef Ramsey's like, is there anything you don't want to get? And everybody over there is like, you know, I can cook anything, Chef. I'm great with anything. So then I was like, well, I got to say that shit too. Otherwise, we're all going to think I'm weak. So like, Mary, are you afraid of anything? Nope. But I'm just like, except for rice. But I didn't even see that on there. So I think we're good. And then it's like rice. But it's not just rice. You know, it's brown rice. Like, that takes double the time. And I only got 45 minutes. I was like, fuck. Shit. Yeah. And that's good. So they didn't even know. Like there was no like How do you know? that they could have like just said, hey, let's throw rice at her. <laughs> so I'm gonna hit her with this rice and we'll see what happens. <laughs> that is crazy. Because I in my head, I'm thinking, oh, that's just editing work. Like they knew she couldn't do rice, so they were gonna throw rice at her. Well, they had no idea I couldn't do rice. That's just pure bad luck. <laughs> I was like, is this how this day is gonna go? Fair enough. Oh man. Um, right. so Oh, sorry, Ward. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Well, I was just going to ask about the cussing, like, in on the show. Like, obviously, Chef Ramsey, like, cusses. Like, that's what he's known for. Are you guys encouraged to cuss on the show, or is it just, like, if it comes out, comes out? Be if who you want to be? it comes out. Like, you, we work in kitchens. I... I curse like a fucking sailor. And I think it's funny because, like, I don't curse in front of my mom at all. Like, she never curses in front of me. I don't curse in front of her. And so she's wow. watching the show. And I'm like, hey, mom, you're going to see, like, I'm still the same person. I just say a lot of bad words. And she's <laughs> like, it's OK, honey. I understand. You know, every other word. I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck is this? Fuck that. <laughs> fuck that bitch. That's fucking great. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh, George is going to have to beep all that shit out. I got you, George. Day. What the beep? And I, I need a beep in this. And what the beep, man? This champagne. Yeah, no one's going to know what the fuck you said, dude. Shit. <laughs> oh, so, okay, that was the thing I had. Um, the other thing is, I have to ask this question before it gets any longer. Uh, Aron Sanchez. Yes. I love Aron Sanchez. Because <laughs> we're from yeah. San Antonio. Exactly. Uh, is he is he as dreamy as he is, and is he as dreamy in person as he is off cam off on camera? Oh, yeah, I'm a biased opinion. Oh no, I'm not a biased opinion. You're a biased opinion because you use the word dreamy. I was like, I don't really see him as dreamy. Like, <laughs> sexy? Should I say sexy? Is he as sexy in person? Is he hot? I uh, I thought he was nice. I didn't think I I don't find <laughs> him he was nice. He was a nice person. I know he went there and he's like, every, all judges say the same thing. They're like, hi, Mary Lou. And I'm like, hi. They're like, I like your hair. And I'm like, thank you. And I was like, thank you, Aaron. I just want you to know that I see your things all the time. And I was like, cacique. And he goes, like Chef Ramsey looks at him. He goes, cacique, what is that? And he goes, you're from South Texas, aren't you? And I said, I am. <laughs> <laughs> cacique is my brand. I was like, you know, we, we have the, the queso. We have the crema. What do you need? Cacique, it's a little station right inside. <laughs> Nice. So um, he was he was really nice. He's really respectful. He didn't demean anybody. He didn't talk down to anybody. Um, my friend Corey ended up getting very upset with her ruling over her um, her mole, and I was like, I'm sorry, Corey. Oh shit! Sorry. Yeah, she was she was pissed. <laughs> she's in the confessional, and she's like, "Fuck that! He doesn't fucking know what's going on." I was like, "You real passionate right now? You real passionate?" <laughs> and I was like, "You know they don't see this right." Like, just calm down. And she's like, I just got mad. I was like, no, it's fine. You should stop. But I, I was fine with him. He didn't do anything disrespectful from what I saw. That's cool. I've, I've always wondered that because it's like, man, he's so cool on TV. Like, I would hate to meet him. And then he'd be like an a-hole. Yeah. yeah. I was like, oh. It was really nice. 
And he, him and Gordon, like, they tell all their jokes next to each other. Like, you can tell that they are friends outside of the show. And I was like, oh, buddies. <laughs> well, that was technically a question from a wife. I just wanted to ask it in my perspective. Oh. No, she, she, yeah, she's okay. We watch food stuff, all the food shows all the time. Mm-hmm. Just never house kitchen. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so Aron Sanchez, every time he comes out, like, I don't exist in the room anymore. Like, as soon as he's in the room, he's on TV, I do not exist. And I don't blame her. I mean, that's a Aron, right. it's Aron. <laughs> um, so I had to ask that question uh, after seeing that episode. Mm. George, should I ask my final question? I think so. Uh, any more secrets that we can tell from Hell's Kitchen? Before we ask our last question? I don't think I have any more secrets. I mean, All right. Well, our, our last question might, uh, you might have to reveal one last secret. Maybe. Well, it, it's up to you. Are you ready? Okay. All yeah. right. Can you give us a too hard, too fast story? Whether it be about yourself or someone else. You know what I mean? Someone, if you got drunk way too fast, way too hard, way too fast. Or okay. if you want, it could be about someone else, whatever you feel comfortable sharing. Okay, okay. Too hard, too fast. Like I can give you a drunk story and I or I could give you like a cooking story. Which one do you want? Your choice. Oh, I'd rather have drunk story. Okay, drunk story. Perfect. Okay, Okay, so like I didn't start drinking until I was 21. Like I was that good girl. Like you tell me not to do it. I didn't do it. I didn't start drinking until I was 21, and I was 21 when I was an RA in college. So it's like my (laughs) second year. RA in college and we had my friend had thrown this party and like his name was Latrell and Latrell always threw the best fucking parties I love being there so all the RAs that weren't on call and when you're on call you're stuck are going to go out so we all went out we went to his party and my friend stops at the store and she gets like this bread because she's like man when I eat bread like it just sops up all the alcohol and I was like is that real she's like yeah sops it all up she my white friend so <laughs> yeah we're out there we're having a good time i'm dancing i'm partying and i don't really remember too much of what happened but i remember like he made this ever clear punch and mm-hmm. i was like "Ooh!" and then me being like the lightweight that i am i had like one glass and i drank all of it and i was like this tastes great <laughs> and i got drunk as fuck and i woke up and you know like you remember everything's like loud and you wake up and everything is just dead quiet and i was like where am I? And I remember I had to throw up. So I, I'm like laying in his room or I'm in somebody's room and I grabbed like a pile of clothes that's next to me and I threw up in the clothes and then I folded them like up and I just kind of shoved them aside <laughs> and I fell back asleep and I woke back up and it's like six in the morning and my phone is like on 1%, you know, them iPhones, they do 1% forever. So it's like, how long? So I call like one of my friends. I used the term friend loosely. I knew he would answer the phone. Cause everybody else was fucking gone. Like the two people I went with, they left me and I was like, sons of bitches. Yeah. So I called the person. I'm like, Hey, um, I got this, these apartments. Can you come get me? And he's like, where are you at? And I said, I'm at Everclear apartments. And he's like, Mary, there's no such thing as Everclear apartments. I said, <laughs> That's what you drank. <laughs> I was like, that's the alcohol, isn't it? that's the last thing that i remember so i remember i had to like leave the entire like the building go out so i could see the name of the apartments and then he came to get me right before like my phone had died and he picks me up and he brings me back and my friend who left me is at the front desk because she was an RA and she had to work there at like 6 a.m and i walk in and i was like you fucking left me you son of a bitch and she <laughs> yeah. Mary, somebody took my fucking bread and I don't know where it went. I wouldn't have this hangover. And I was like, you left me. You left me there. So, and like to this day, that's the roommate who lives with me right now. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> she, who moved in last week and I was like, I still don't forgive you for leaving me. <laughs> drunk ass. <laughs> Later on, somebody's telling me a story and they're like, yeah, Mary, we had a trail's party. And I was like, yeah. There's like, <clears throat> man, there was this trail of bread all the way to the parking lot from his house and I was like you held that bag upside down didn't you so nobody ate your bread you held the bag upside down and you <laughs> oh my gosh so she's over there complaining about it I was like this is your fault <laughs> uh, okay. I was so mad I was so mad so there's there's my too hard too fast story. Yeah, that's a good too hard too fast story that is a good that is a perfect too hard too fast story also because I don't know why people think that bread is going to save you from your <laughs> 
<laughs> and then me. I think a couple, like two weeks later, my friend messages me and he goes, somebody threw up in my clothes. And I was like, <laughs> you just found that? <laughs> and then, it was me like six months ago. I was like, wow. hey. Remember what? I was like, that was me. <laughs> that smell had to be horrible. Uh, so fucking <laughs> That's a great two hearts of fast story. Mary Lou Davis, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I didn't have this question. Mary Lou Davis, I have one more question. Yes, sir. What is the worst thing that has ever happened to you in the kitchen? Because accidents happen in the kitchen. Okay, the worst accident that I've had in the kitchen. Um, I got a steam burn. Like steam is one of the worst ways to burn yourself because it just like sits there forever. And I remember one of my chefs. I opened up, we have a steamer, it's a double steamer. So I remember I was opening up the top one to grab some fucking rice out of there. The and the rice out. You know, brown rice. And then he grabs the bottom one, he opens and all that shit like shot up and like it got the whole forearm and they had to like wrap it in like gauze and ice. And I remember some of my skin's coming off. I was like, ah, shit fucking burns. And so then I couldn't really cook because when my hand got closer to the heat, it would burn. So I had kept having to like, dunk towels in water and wrap them around my arm so that I could go and cook with them. That was like one of my worst burns I'd ever had. Oh, man. That's horrible. Dang, I can't imagine. What the? Yes. I so thought you were going to say like you sliced a finger or something. Wow. The skin was coming off. Yeah, it was a bad, like, I don't know what it is about steam, but that shit is the, one of the worst ways you can burn yourself. Did it leave a mark or anything like that? No, I didn't leave a mark. I got fresh skin now. <laughs> nice. There you go. <laughs> sure. Well, with that said, I think it's been a good time with Mary Lou Davis, yeah. Chef Mary Lou Davis from Whiskey oh, Cake, chef. from House Kitchen Season 19. Uh, go watch it. It's a good show. I'm a fan now. Uh, yeah. Most of the fan for her. It's real funny on the, on the show. She was real funny here. But with that said, Worm, it's time to close it out. What are you going to say? Uh, Mary Lou's in Hell. Hell's Kitchen. Go check it out. Bye, Hell Kills. <laughs> <laughs> and with that said, thank you very much to H2Fers. See you guys next week. Remember, dare to be you, dare to be weird. Bye.